Neff. And welcome to the Glacially Musical Podcast. It is beer, metal, and swearing. I, of course, am Nick Cameron of Glacially Musical, and I am joined by my good friend, Climbing Trees Chakas. How are we doing today, buddy? That is not what I was going to go with, but I totally blanked. I, I had it. It was good. It's over. Fuck it. How are you doing? I am swell. How are you? Uh, uh, life is a veritable hellscape at times, but right now I am in a wonderful respite. This is one of my favorite times of the week. My hands are moving. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sorry, but idle hands are the devil's playground, all that kind of good stuff. I am going to beer check. Probably only going to go with one today. I have a, uh, a Glacier Musical Podcast favorite, the STL IPA, which is an eight ounce malt back hot monster of a DIPA. However, it is, uh, this is the 19 ounce can, which I got for $2.50. For anybody playing at home, a 16 ounce can costs $2.50 when you buy four. Life hack. Nice work. All right, I've got the Duvel glass again, because the Duvel glass is perfect for what I'm drinking. And on top of that, it's really big. Nick wants the D IPA. Hey, 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 hey. What I say off air is supposed to be off air. Oh, that's delicious. I love this. Got a nice good head, good pour. Happy times. I have a lot of new beers in the house. I was going to even let you pick my beer, but then I thought of it differently. Um, this is... Pizza Port Brewing's Beer Friends Forever BFF uh, Stone Brewing Associate, basically uh, India Pale Ale, which I'm a fan. So let's uh, we'll get the popper. Do you I'm hear? not hearing. No, you never hear those, huh? I don't know no, why they don't show up anymore. They don't show up. I'm, I mean, literally, this is the mic right here with my end of my hand. Glass <sighs> tilt pour. Slow and steady wins the race. Do, 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 do. Last episode, Nick called my beer urine colored. I mean, in fairness. Oh, that is a nice, that is a slightly unfiltered, looks like. Mm -hmm. That's a good, nice, good head on it. Good beer. Cheers, my friend. Always a good time. A little bit of foam in there, but yeah. Oh, we should have pointed out. Thank you, everybody, for checking in who are new. I know it's been a lot of New Year's lately. So hopefully you will like and subscribe or put a comment calling me a weirdo or whatever. Insult me. It's great. I love it. I'm a masochist. But here's the way this works. We do this like we're a regular program. We have our departments, you know, greeting, beer check, shirt check, which, by the way, I'm rocking my pitter patter letter candy t-shirt again this week. Uh, then and Keefe's rocking his merciful fate that I'm thinking he's going to talk about where he got that shirt. Then we do the vinyl check. Then we talk about the news of the day. Then we talk about the meat of the episode. This week is the second record by Body Count, Born Dead. And we'll get to that when we have to. Yes. Yes, we will. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, you want to vinyl check first? You want me to vinyl check first? You vinyl check first because I have quite a bit. All right, these these vinyls, uh, these records this week are not actually strictly for me. My little one has found her way into the new wave rabbit hole. I don't know what happened, but here we are. So I picked up the new wave classic. Uh, Youthquake by Dead or Alive. This does have You Spin Me Right Round. So it is, uh, they got this on Discogs. It was I feel like you should sing it. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby. Nice good copy. I think I only got it for like $7 shipped. So came out of my uh, my my uh, Discogs for sale budget, which is always nice, did not come out of the family budget. And then, because this would make my wife giggle, I picked up, let me get the title this time so I know it. 
It Takes Two by Rob Bass and DJ Rock. DJ Easy Rock. That's too many letters. I'm just going to call him DJ Rock. That's not cool. This was another cheap one. Uh, six or seven plus shipping, I believe. This actually is also something I used to sing at karaoke for her. I was about to say, can you sing the classic sample refrain that I think is a James Brown sample? No, I can't sing that. But Woo! Cut! No. Woo! Cut! And they still no, but yeah, it's My name's Rob Bass and I came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock a microphone. I get stupid. I mean, cont- mean outrageous. Say it with me if you're contagious. So that's all I, I mean. I, I, don't, I need the words. But yeah, uh, you know, karaoke jam. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick that one up. And good bass sounds great. I got to clean them both still. And I apologize for the musical interludes uh, made by me because uh, today was a day at work. It um, we're headed into the the holiday slowdown. So at like eleven thirty, the phone stopped ringing. And when the phone stopped ringing, I have nothing to do. I have a very reactive, not proactive job. So I'm a little, woo-hoo. what you got? So I'm interrupting my chronological acquisition order. Keefe has quirks. I have quirks. I'm going to jump ahead. So I attended, I've been talking about it on many recent pods. I went out to Psycho Las Vegas and I had a hell of a time. Yes, I did get this shirt. This is actually the newest, the brand new Merciful Fate shirt. This is uh, for their single, which I did hear live, uh, The Jackal of Salzburg. Uh, It's awesome. They were awesome. The whole festival was awesome. I'll I'll spare a longer review. You can hear tell that uh, Fate is going to go on a tour. That is the story. And King did a few interviews in and around the festival that say... The Merciful Fate record has moved ahead of the King Diamond record in terms of finished product, just by nature of them being together all summer, in his opinion, and maybe that record will now come first. Originally, he had said, no, I think the King Diamond record will be first, and then the Fate record, it was further away. So next couple of years, going to be eating good if you love King Diamond. He was wonderful. They were great. Show was amazing. The whole weekend was a blur. A little too many bands. But anyway, so long story short, I picked up some vinyl in Vegas. Now I got off the plane and I went right to right to vinyl shopping. I should not have done this. I I traveled with an empty suitcase with the idea that I was going to bring home a whale of merch and records. I ended up policing myself a little bit after the first couple of days. But I um, so I went to this antique mall that has a pop up store for Metal Blade Records. Now, Metal Blade cool. Records sponsored Cycle Las Vegas. And when I say store, it's like two kiosks in a antiques mall. So it's like a lot of little kiosks. Everybody's got tchotchkes and little things. I love me an antique mall. And a I, lot of them have a great little, oh, you'll find like one or two vendors. There was one in an antique mall in um, St. Peter's, Missouri, which is about 35 miles west of here. And there was a guy that had a really good one. I got like things like Tribute. Diary of a Madman. Uh, he had Metallica bootlegs, all kinds of cool stuff. There's definitely a few record stores in this place, aside from Metal Blade, had like one side on one side of an aisle was vinyl and some knickknacks, and the other side was shirts. So we and cool. Uh, most of this mall's layout, and this might be typical of most flea markets and antique malls, were like unsupervised kiosks with everything yep. keyed into their system to charge. And then obviously they pay out. So consignment probably, uh, you know, Brian Slagle lives in Las Vegas partly now. So I think that's part of the reason why it's there. Um, they Metal Blade sponsored, was a sponsor of Psycho. I think Brian did like a private thing with fans. Uh, just couldn't get a, a hold of a ticket for it. So anyway, I go to the, right off the plane, take an Uber right to this thing. It's kind of equidistant, halfway, di- sorry, halfway distant between the airport and my hotel. And I go to the Metal Blade shop and I pick up immediately. I'm like, I need to support this place. So I pick up a few things um, and a few things that I didn't have. And I felt like I, I was going to only buy something if I couldn't live without it. So that's the that's the thing. So um, starting with the most recent Sacred Reich album. Everybody knows this is one of my favorite bands. Still in the plastic. Haven't even opened it from the trip. Awakening. 
Uh, they're already working on another new album. I love this record. Uh, re the return of Dave McLean to Sacred Reich has been awesome since he left Machine Head. Amazing record worth having. Uh, also, we had talked about this band, I think, on a more recent podcast, uh, Sacrifice, the Canadian thrash metal band that I'm a big fan of. You've sometimes seen me in a Sacrifice t-shirt. This is Apocalypse Inside. This might be their best album. It's debatable. Uh, really killer. And uh, I'm trying to remember what year this is from, but this press is from 2019. And I have not, I, this is actually sort of a little open. Let's see what's, let's see what's inside really quick in case it's fancy. I don't remember. Um, there's a gorgeous print. This, this is like an incredible uh, layout and print. And this looks like. Reminds me of Howl's Moving Castle a little bit. A little, yeah, I'm sure. And it's on a black vinyl, but it's got the paper with the Mylar inside. So big nice. fan, big, big fan. And this record surprised me. This is a new vinyl double LP pressing of Hammers of Misfortune, 17th Street. Band ended rather ignominiously after a member turned out to be shitty, but uh, this is amazing. Uh, 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. So again, like 20 bucks, 23 bucks for Sacred Rights, about standard price. Yeah. Sacrifice was also 20. Um, so pretty awesome. That's just from the Metal Blade store. And that's where I stopped myself. They had a lot of stuff. I, you know, like, do I need a $20 Metal Blade pint glass that I have to then fly home with? $20 and, pint glass? No. They had a lot of cool stuff, though. Like a Metal Blade scarf. I now live in California. don't really need scarves. Um, they had a lot of fun stuff. And the shirts, none of were, like, would have fit me, but they had a lot of cool stuff. So I do recommend if you go to Vegas, it's worth checking out. The whole mall is great, run by really swell people, really sweethearts. They watched my bags for me and put them like behind the counter so I could shop freely and not sh schlep my stuff around. Then there was another record store in the mall that had a lot of cool stuff, like Lars Ulrich drum snare and all kinds of other stuff that they had, like little. So that was keys. not from Saint Anger. No, probably not. Jokes. He's got jokes. So, but this other record store had a couple of 45s that I was like, oh, this is like. That's brand new. Um, I was like, okay, I, I kind of need to have this. I love the Go-Go's. It was just Gina Shock's birthday. 10 bucks. 10 bucks. We have, oh. uh, we have talk show, I believe. Nice. And then here's another one. I would not have thought that I would have bought it, but I was like, you know what? This is kind of cool. I've been in a grungy, sentimental mood lately. So Blind Melon, Tones of Home single. Same album as No Rain and uh, other things. So this was also cool. And That I is a choice. Up. It is a selection. Uh, then on a whim, I passed one more kiosk. And they have these vintage 45s. And I was like, just for sentimental value, let me check these out. Now, here's a fun, I'll keep this to like literally a minute. <clears throat> I used to, I inherited my parents' record collection when they passed. That My dad had reel-to-reels that were desiccated and I threw them away, but they were probably like invaluable. But there was no way back then I could, you know, take them with me, restore them, get a reel-to-reel -reel player. It's like a far fetch. So I chucked them. And my parents had a um, like a toolbox, a big steel metal toolbox of 45s. And they were all like Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Dinah, Washington, Nat King Cole, all this stuff. I, long story short, had my uh, storage cleaned out from under me and I lost all that stuff. Probably like thousands of dollars of records, but also sentimental records of my parents. Good fucking job. But anyway. Beer, metal, and swearing. So I passed by this kiosk last, next to last thing, and uh, they had these old school 45s. And I was like, at the very least, I can use these as like a decoration or some fun thing. I don't have to necessarily play them. I haven't tried to. Um, how about uh, this is do, 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 do. Uh, Errol Garner, I Cover the Waterfront. This is music mm. from literally you know, 60, 70 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> Willie Nelson on the road again, 45. These are all Ooh, like $3 nice. with the original labels. And I actually really like, I picked these out because of labels and artwork. 
So, you know, really exciting Columbia Records label. This is like another old school Columbia Records label, the red label. And, the, and, the, and then it was kind of like an ad on the jacket, on the sleeve of other stuff they have for sale, like that the record label put out at the same time, classical and otherwise. And then finally, um, could not pass up an Ella Fitzgerald with the Paul Smith Quartet. Oh, and yeah. this is um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Lurale. Which is a classic Ella. Yeah, we track. we have a couple Ella Ella Fitzgerald LPs. And then and then finally, I get to Psycho, and the merch is a clusterfuck. Right? Uh, so Psycho is at Resorts World Hotel. There's six stages all over the festival, including the pool stage. You've never seen a mosh pit in a swimming pool while at the gates plays Slaughter of the Soul. It was sick. But the merch is a just a mess, man. Like you really, apparently like the first day for the pre-party, a lot of stuff was already picked over and like, you know, bought up. And then, you know, as bands arrive, their merch comes in, but mostly merch is sent ahead. And so it's just like chaos, right? It's just chaos, just rows and rows of people and a whole conference room side of a wall of shirts up the wall. And they didn't have a lot of vinyl at this thing. And I was really surprised. But then I thought like a lot of these come bands are coming from other countries and maybe it's just hard to ship the vinyl or truck the vinyl around the country with them in the summer probably not the best move so what did i buy that they had that i was like i could have bought this at any other time and shipped it but i bought it in person love me forever the motorhead tribute album from psycho las vegas's label psycho wax Very so this cool. is pretty badass you know all the typical subjects uh Ace of Spades in the name of tragedy, born to raise hell, God was never on your side, please don't touch, love me like a reptile, iron horse, order, fade to black, killed by death, America, sacrifice, Ramones, born to lose, iron fist, dirty love, go to hell, bomber, motorhead. Done by some all-star bands, but also Creeping Death, Death by Stereo, Lord Buffalo, Blackwater, Holy Light, and Nat Pike, Howling Giant, Calico Cooper, Chuck Garrett, and Kyle Jewett, Cyclona, Cephalic Carnage, King Dude, Exhorter, Stoner, Fogua, High on Fire by Themselves, Midnight, Bridge City Sinners, which is probably my favorite track on here, Bomber, and I Hate, you know, Mothership, and I Hate God. So, I mean, like, pretty amazing on four sides. And I just want to pull this out. Came in the black sleeve with the Mylar already in it, and this oh, dropped on the floor, this gorgeous wine-colored Love Me Forever. Nice. I would call that Ox... No, no, I wouldn't. Take that back. My uh, my copy of Cultist to Ghoulis, uh... We choose evil ways instead of love, which is an amazing triple LP. I might nice. Have. It uh, it's ox blood. It's close to that, but a little bit darker. Right. So pretty pretty big haul for me. Uh, was again, this is the you know Vegas is very expensive. That was the number one complaint. I think a lot of people did no research at all, just came to Las Vegas and thought it was like any other city, and that everything isn't like eighty percent more. And every level, everything is a fortune. Nothing is inexpensive. There's no cheap anything. So it's Even not cheap anymore. Even if you get hacks, it used to be the cheap vacation place, right? But it's definitely not anymore. It's very well, it's probably not because yeah. everybody has gambling now. Well, everybody has gambling, but also like Vegas is trying to make back that money they lost. So that's the problem with Vegas. But I had a great time. I saw a lot of friends from New York and Boston, especially. Include made some made some new friends, some Twitter friends, are now real life in person friends. Saw a bunch of great bands. So too many bands, actually. Too many stages, too many bands. I was exhausted. Uh, and then I worked on Monday like an idiot. I should have definitely need to remember that I'm old and round and I need to take days off after festivals and before. And I only did three of the four days. I didn't even do the early day, the first night, nighttime pre-party, the swim. So uh, yeah, what do you know? Great time, big vinyl haul. I'm looking forward to spinning some of these things. And uh, next podcast, I'll get back to my in-order stuff. I'm sorry, I am wiggly and moving all around today. I'm That's not okay. I haven't found my I haven't found my spot. Uh, I've changed the angle of the camera so I look better, and you can see my cool salt and pepper hair more. But uh, I, I'm I'm creature of habit, and I'm like Sheldon. So, but so uh, beer check, shirt check, vinyl. Real what quick, one news of the day item that's not really news. <laughs> One of the questions I have heard many, many, many times when I've been talk when I've talked to people about vinyl and upkeep is how do we know when to change our needles? I recently changed mine because it was not tracking properly. Oh, 
<clears throat> one side stopped. I, I couldn't get that side to track at the same volume as the other side. Changed needles, fixed it, and then, but unfortunately this needle, the, the needle protector was a little loose, so I had to take it off to make it track properly. But not a big deal. Just, so that's just one thing. Listen, if you're curious about when to change your needle, just pay attention to the sound. When you hear that it's different, when something isn't right, it's time to swap it out. And as I've said before, it's always important to have spares. You have said this. I do not have a spare needle right now. So maybe I need to. All I can do is up. tell you and give you my wisdom. Put you on the path. If you don't follow it, it's your own damn fault. I'm not going to be Obi-Wan. I failed you, Anakin. Be like, uh, oh, bitch. Uh, I did unrelated. I did see rogue one in the movies and they showed 10 more minutes of andor that hasn't been seen yet and it is oh, very phenomenal cool. looking i and wasn't really so excited fun. about andor until i saw a trail i saw a trailer yeah. and i'm like nope nailed it yeah he's incredible and it's like watching the motorcycle diaries it's like the evolution of a, rev a revolutionary like of a rebel it's really you know how the rebellion is formed in the way you didn't see it before and uh you know I, one of the things i heard recently on a big podcast who's so big i'm not going to say their name but they talked about how people of our age and a little bit older don't like the disney star wars no i love the disney star wars the star wars that you love the most is the one you came in on unless you genuinely love and accept star wars for what it is star wars is really terrible hackneyed storytelling that's kind of bad when you're eight and you see space wizards with light with light up glow laser swords you don't care but then these new movies come out and you're like oh this dialogue is bad this acting is subpar i mean it always is that's what's highly, great about i highly recommend everybody watch the uh cinema sins channel on youtube and watch the everything wrong with entire series of star wars that started doing these roll-ups of all their episodes i don't need that <clears throat> it's fun though it's funny i don't doubt it's it but funny. i know what's wrong with star wars yeah yeah a lot of a lot of yeah i know uh news of the day item i have kiss has announced their latest super deluxe mega box set creatures of the night they are releasing it in the super mega deluxe for three hundred dollars it's like five CDs and a bunch of trinkets, three hundred dollars. I don't need trinkets. I don't need CDs. It's got a book. It's got a box. Okay, I don't need a box for five CDs and a shitload of trinkets. The one of the cool things is they're doing a live CD on there, which is not a single show, which I think is a bit interesting that they have piecemealed the set list together, which I have a lot of personal fan conspiracy theories about that. Like they just chose the ones where Vinny didn't fuck it up so much. I know a lot of people really talk about how great the Vinny Vincent, Eric Carr era of Kiss was for live shows. I cannot agree with them. Um, I listen to those and I can't tell what song they're playing. So the live isn't that cool for me. There is also a dual CD version, which has most of the stuff. There's also demos and things like that, some unreleased songs. And then there is a three LP version, which is the album itself remastered uh, at half speed, I believe. They did a half speed master and then, you know, some demos and some live stuff, which, okay. Then there's also the single version of the al single LP version of the album, which is half speed mastered. I may or may not buy that. It all depends on how many are printed. They did announce, though, this is the original 1982 mix of the record. It is not the 1985 mix, which is what the 2014 repress was, which is why I don't have one. I don't want the 85 mix. I want the original mix with the drums that almost kind of sort of sound like John Bonham on When the Levee Breaks. So, overpriced. So Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that was one of my news items. So thank you. Uh, I don't think Creatures of the Night needs a box set. I'll just say no, it, it doesn't. It's not that good an album to deserve a box set. The Elder would be interesting if there was interesting stuff. I don't think there's anything interesting. There but... is. There, there is. Because what they could do, but they would need to get former members on board 
whom they can't stand. Because it would be interesting to get three or four versions of the Elder where you see the original album morph into the Elder. Right. Because a lot of those songs were things that they had written and started working on, and then they had to scrap it all and start it and, and, and fix them. How much is, but the thing is, is Kiss has never been one of the bands that archived their stuff, regardless of what they may say. Oh, so there's, I, I, this is a good segue. You're not wrong. I also, one thing that I did in Vegas is I went to the Kiss Museum and it was awesome. I just say that I played the Kiss mini golf. Not a lot of fun to play mini golf by yourself, but I went to the Kiss Museum. The Kiss Museum was incredible. Anybody that goes to Vegas and you love Kiss, go do it. It's not even that much money. It surprised me. I thought it was going to be like 50 bucks. It was like 12 bucks. Uh, souvenirs they don't have a lot of it's a surprise I would have thought they would have had I would have thought like if they kiss has a thing they would have it you know amazing keep, stuff but they didn't keep in mind well never mind I'm not gonna go there uh any other big news we need to talk about so here's the thing I was gonna bring up since we're just kiss 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 everything is so there's a kiss movie coming out not shouted out loud the biopic that's being made I don't think that's happening but you think it's not happening I don't think so it's it's, it's been it's been being made for five right. years. Well, since. there's another movie. I guess you haven't been aware of it or no, seen I'm it. not. I, familiar I, with I this. was going to send you the trailer so we could both watch it and then talk about it. Uh, Bill O'Coin's son is making a Kiss movie. Oh, the one with Michael Ian Black. Yes. Yes, I do know about this. And it looks cool. Now, I don't know how many, how big the audience is. So like in the, in the Elton John movie and in the Queen movie, that manager guy is worthy of being played by two famous actors in two different movies. Okay. And um, who kind of defrauded both bands of a lot of money. And in the case of Elton was Svengali lover, controlling person for a long time, <laughs> kept Elton on drugs and a whole bunch of things isolated from people. So in that movie, you know, like, yeah, like, does Kiss's management story deserve a movie? But, like, it looks cool. Kiss fans are angry because the kiss of it is off, right? Like, just wrong makeup. It's not being done with a big budget. It's being done as an independent film. So you're just, like, faking a Kiss concert with no budget, in, you know, trying to show what the 70s Kobo theater show would have looked like. Kiss fans are, of course, you know, enraged and getting out of their mobile strollers and like Wally and angry with their 90 ounce Slurpee to complain. See, the one, you know, I, one of the things I've said about Kiss versus Metallica over the years is Metallica has always understood one thing Kiss does not. The music is your product. Mm. And the more you can do with that to make money, the more money you're going to make. Kiss's product is their faces. And that's the one thing they own is they own the rights to their faces. And so, and they want giant licensing fees and ridiculous numbers of things. So it, that's why I don't think Shattered Out Loud is going to happen because they're going to have to have complete and creative control or they won't do it. They're not going to tell the story right. And people are going to be just as angry. And that's what this is like, oh, well, you know, that's not the Kiss makeup. No, it's not because the Kiss won't, probably won't let them use it for any reasonable amount of money for a lower budget film. Fair enough. So anyway, I just thought you, yeah, I wanted to talk about this DIY story of early Kiss and how they, you know, sort of became a thing and the um, brains behind Kiss that is not Gene and Paul taking credit for everything. So in... Uh... <clears throat> Gene and Paul are like a lot like Andy Kaufman. In TV interviews, no writer. In print interviews, I got a writer. And that's kind of how Gene and Paul are. When they're on the TV, if they're they're looking at it's a different audience than the ones that are reading the prints. That's all I'm gonna say. So they're a bit more honest in uh, the latter rather than the former. Yeah, there you have it. Um Okay, have we wasted enough time yet? I don't know. I could do Oof. one more news thing or I could skip it. It's not the most fun story, the story I sent to you earlier. Uh, we could skip it if you want to. 
let's if if you want to if you want to do a 30 second one on that i'm fine with that i well, just, just want to rip this band-aid off honestly i don't know I, the long story short is anybody who's been following the news this week saw the last weekend and then early this week the news about neurosis um you know one of my favorite bands of the last 25 years uh they've been a band 30 years um well, maybe more Actually, technically, they were like a hardcore punk band originally. And Scott Kelly has been, you know, he's been having mental, you know, using mental illness as an excuse or a crutch or a thing for a long time. I have a lot of problems. He sort of alluded to this once before that he's had like a lot of personal problems stemming from issues. And he basically made an admission on social media that he's been long term abusing his wife and children and he's retiring from music. He should have said it should have never been in a platform in the public like music, like a band on social media where my personal life was, you know, exposed or whatever. I had exposed myself. Didn't sound like much of an apology to his wife and children. Just sounded like a lot of, you know, deflecting. Uh, he's retired 100 percent from music forever. And he's going to just work on himself and try to support his family uh you know the band finally after a few days later came out with a statement like you know we've known about this for a while but the wife asked us to protect her and the family and not say anything until it was ready to come out That's oh what, okay because uh, immediately twitter was like the band knew the publicist knew the record label is their own you know like they're very dear for a big band you think of a legendary status band that helped invent a genre like neurosis they're very diy they don't have a major label. They have their own label. They have their own distribution. They have their own, in, you know, sort of publicity company that works with them. And a lot of the the metal Twitter was blaming forces around them for protecting Scott and not outing him sooner. But I had a feeling the wife had asked to like, there has to be a right time to share the story. Who am I to say? I don't know. Nobody really knows. We haven't heard from her. We haven't heard, you know, I worry about the safety and, you know, of the, the wife and child, children. In this case, the band basically alluded to the fact that they're done. This has besmirched them beyond the point of repair. And at some later date, this is the only statement they're going to make about Scott, but at some later date, they'll make a statement about their own future projects, which they all have side plans and side projects and things. But so, yeah, just, you know, disappointing. Obviously, you know, if you're out there and you're in this kind of situation, there's help for you. There'll be numbers we can list in the description. But, um, you know, terrible, fuck terrible, terrible story. To, you know, like personally, again, I, you, everybody's different. A lot of people seem to be able to separate the art from the artist and love and respect terrible people. I can't personally. So the band is kind of ruined for me now. I have a lot of good memories about the band and now i can't probably will have a hard time enjoying them based on this but that's me i'm me i don't expect everybody else to do what i do i'm not saying i'm better that's just what i do my i mean my drawing line i i was semi-joking last week basically uh when it comes down to when a band makes me feel icky for listening to them if i can't come up with some kind of defense theory in my head like uh we've mentioned marilyn manson on this show many times and I, I, no, I'm done. I, I feel icky listening to any of their music. So out there. Uh, yeah, no, I totally get it. It's, I, I'm not going to personally judge anyone or anybody for what lines they can draw and what lines they won't cross. But, you know, domestic violence is a, I hate to say it this way, but that is a cause that is near and dear to our hearts here in the I don't know. I haven't come up with a name for this house yet. It was the uh, Chateau Cameron before, but it, I don't think it, I should do that again. I don't know. Whatever. The Bat Cave. Here in the spinning room or the Glacially Musical Podcast offices, whatever you want to say, that's it's a big deal for us. So we 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 don't we don't play with that. So yeah, it's um it's pretty terrible. And again, um, yeah, I don't know what to say, except it's uh, very, very disturbing and disappointing. And uh, again, in all cases, whatever the wishes of the wife and children are, are the things that need to be respected the most. Not for people to be like, the band knew for two years and didn't say anything. They were asked not to. Like, that's what they he, claim. Here's, here's my suggestion as somebody who has been very <sighs> deep in the domestic violence world. 
uh, support the wife, support the child, make sure they're safe, do everything you can for them to be safe, finding blame, looking for blame, there's one person to blame. And that's not the record label, it's not the bandmates, it's not the wife, it's not the children, it's the abuser. The abuser is the only one to blame. Fuck him. Yep, basically. Basically. Anyway, oh, now that I brought the fun down, way down. Well, now that the fun's down to uh, down to the no level. Oh, Jesus, I should not let you do this. Um, well, no, this is fine. Let's let's go into Born Dead by Body Count, their second record. We, I'll recap us, unless there's something else you want to do. I, I think this will be pretty quick. And I want to stick my dick in an electrical socket in order to not it's do okay. this again. It's not that bad. There was, <sighs> the Quiet Riot was worse. Way worse. Quiet Riot 3 was worse. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, um, girls, girls, girls. Born Dead is the second girls. record by Body Count, but let's just recap for yep, ourselves it. since as well as the fans. So we, we covered the original Body Count release. We talked about Cop Killer. We talked about the significant significance of that album, regardless of your feelings about it. And again, for all the Kid Rocks and other people who think they're the most censored uh, artists of all time, no one is more censored than Ice-T and Body Count, who had to willingly remove the song from the album because he didn't want that to be the whole story of the band. And uh, Warner was being threatened. And his shows were, you know, very, very, like a lot of very fascist stuff. For Got a guy real serious real fast. Yeah, for a guy who had a very valid reason. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, cop killer, kill all cops. But he was talking about a very specific type of cop, a very specific type of police officer America was dealing with. In a, and it's still relevant today, just a couple of years off from George Floyd. It's still happening it's still happening so oh there was an unarmed man that was killed last night so everywhere so no, not in an in a, in a, in a you know search warrant came. so anyway uh, they go on tour he eventually pulls the song from the record they reissue the record without the song he you know warner, and that was only like a six month time frame i might yeah warner assures ice that they still love him they want him on the label he's a money listen the album sell the album he sells records right you know regardless you know, of your feelings. And um, in the meantime, before he goes back to make another body count record, I think this is important to add in that he releases his next solo record, Home Invasion, which does feature members of body count on it. Because again, Ice's solo rap career was always like a rap rock thing. From, from very early on, he had rock samples and rock band players and Ernie would appear on his records, Ernie C., so Home Invasion comes out, at, is getting prepped, and Warner is under tremendous pressure to drop Ice. And Ice is like, you know what? At this point, they're, they're going to start hindering me. They're already censoring me. I don't even want to be here. So let me get out of my contract. Let me out. And I'll go somewhere else and maybe have my own imprint where I control everything. And so this, this is what happens. Warner agrees to let Ice out of his contract slash drops him. He goes to Relativity, which at the time is a very big rap light label, right? Uh, NWA, early records by other artists. And he has his own imprint, um, which I'm probably going to forget unless I look over at the screen and look it up. Sorry, everybody listening and watching. But technically, it was on an imprint under Relativity is owned by Virgin at this time. So he does jump to another major label. Uh, I'm sorry for Home Invasion, right? It's it's uh, under yeah Home Invasion is under Rhyme Syndicate, which is his was his clique anyway. The Rhyme Syndicate, which you know was like his crew, but also under Pri yeah, Priority Records, not Relativity. Sorry, Priority Records. So Priority was a well known rap label, and so he puts out Home Invasion, and it does pretty well. Um, and it's mostly a hardcore rap album with again the same themes as as Body Count and Cop Killer, and the same you know a lot of a lot of sex stuff, a lot of pimp stuff, a lot of revolution stuff, a lot of, you know, higher mental altitude, heady lyrics and, and anti-racism lyrics and a whole nine yards. So it was ended up being a gold record, by the way, uh, within a year, within that year, like shipped gold. So, you know, despite the controversy, it certainly didn't hurt ice. So he goes right back to make Born Dead during 93. And he's got movies going on at this time. So Born Dead is, is recorded and, and released. Recorded in 
early 94 and released in September. It's actually the anniversary is coming up. So, and it's, it's more, it's more of the same of body count. It's, it's actually like, the, the anniversary will have hit the day before this drops. Right. So maybe I'll drop it on, maybe I'll drop it on the anniversary. Maybe, maybe. I don't know if it'll help. It won't help the record. That's for sure. How? So no, we will not. It's, it's more of the same. It's hardcore. It's crossover thrash. It's hardcore punk inspired. It's ice rapping. It's sometimes ice singing. It's sometimes ice screaming. Uh, same, mostly the same lineup as the first Body Count record. This is his band. Ice T, Ernie C, D Rock, the Executioner, also on rhythm guitar. Moose Man on bass. Beatmaster V on drums. With Shawnee Sean as the sampler and backing vocals, and Hype Man and Shawnee Mac also Hype Man and backing vocals. So, anywho, uh, this record, um, you know, gets an interesting, auspicious debut, um, and. You know, it's got got a fun, fun album cover with you know uh, little kid baby blocks, right? Letter blocks and cribs and blood, and you know just kind of his his personal feeling about uh, racism in America. And then liner notes, Ice T dedicates the album to all the people of color throughout the entire world, and he lists them off: Asian, Latino, Native American, Hawaiian, Italian, Indian, Persian, African, or Aboriginal, or any other nationality that white supremacists would love to see born dead mic drop like that's his platform right and he's still a very popular rapper he's again gold records and movies and stuff this is your early 90s gangster rap movies are happening as a response to gangster rap oh yeah boys in the hood south yeah. south yeah. central south central menace the society that's the one i couldn't remember the name juice which is my one of my all-time favorites I, you know we talked about boys in the hood um, colors isn't that far colors, that far in the rear view mirror right um and of course ice t's colors is the 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 sound the the lead you know the the track it's it's actually and of course you know new jack man. city new jack city so these are these are you know ricochet these are all kind of seminal records or seminal movies at the in pop culture um and so yeah man born dead comes out and he ends up on virgin so he leaves warner he goes independent for rap and he ends up on Virgin, which is from Warner to Virgin. Pretty good, right? It's not a big drop off. Virgin was one of the biggest record labels in the world at this time. I think they had bought Island Records at this time also. So then he's like label mates with Anthrax and uh, or before for a Anthrax, minute. right before Anthrax goes to Electro, right? Before this, well, it's probably before this. So no it was after this yeah well no before because uh sound of white noise is on electra so electra was that was 94 93 oh this is nine. this album yeah this is never 94. mind yeah Sorry. that's my bad that's my bad so anyway um got some good songs but it's a little more uneven than the last record and again we had said like realistically aside from, there's there's some great songs on the first body count record and then there's a lot of filler right just to be fair just to yeah. be fair um and, and but but the greatness a lot of same a lot of sameness of it as well there's a lot of sameness which we see again here and that's okay Way worse that's sometimes worse i will say that like if there's a band that could write their own walkout music if they were wrestlers it's body count body count is great at making a song about body count about we're body count mother pudger and here we are and like there's nobody better at this agreed um, unfortunately it doesn't make a whole record though. It doesn't make it. No, it does record. not. That so, was the best song on the album. It's one of the best songs on the album. So it's 90 one, seconds. Yeah. So anywho, let's just go mercil mercifully through the track by track pretty quick. It shouldn't take long. Um and yeah, man. So the album opens up with body MF count. Just like you'd think, like already kind of having to censor himself on the and, first you know, track title. That, it's a good song. It's a great intro. Great. I was wrong. It's not 90 seconds. It's actually 215. However, it's a bit long for what it is. It should have been about 90. And good riff, though. Good, good like, riff. Pump you up. Good first track, intro track, basically. Nick hates intro tracks, by the way. I do. This is an intro track. No way around it. No, I know what it is. I know what it is. <clears throat> um, it's, but it's not an overture. That's what I really hate is I hate the death metal overture. Yeah, a little bit. Yes. And I hate them because they show up on shuffle. Like if, if I'm listening to uh, shuffle on my, my, my iPhone, 
the whatever the hell that track is on the beginning of Surgical Steel by Carcass, that's the one that comes up five times before anything else does. And it pisses me off. That's yeah. why I don't like them. But great riff. And I'm like, I'm because I, I had this, I bought this years ago, and I remembered it being awful. And I was thinking, you know, maybe it's not as bad. No, I'm what doing my walk, my lunch walk, and I'm getting pumped up for this track, and we're bodying out, motherfucker. Yeah. And then it kind of stopped. Okay. Yeah, it's there's there's a couple of those tracks on the first record. None of them are topped by this. There's a couple of those tracks on this record. They're all just a little under par. But okay, good way to open the album. Let's just say if you're going to have an opening and you're this band, it's not a bad way to open the record. It's familiar. It's memorable. Probably a little too long for what it is, but okay, fine. The next track is Masters of Revenge, which is like a straight up Suicidal Tendencies, DRI, crossover thrash. Not it's a lot of not good. It's not that great. Not a lot of depth. Good riff. Yeah, it's uh, got one good riff. Yeah. That we hear for five minutes. And during that five minutes, I believe there were seven words in the I mean, the vast majority of this song is Ice T screaming revenge. It's like, okay, that's the conclusion. What about the setup? You're, you know, a story has a setup. There, there's no, and this is going to be a running theme with me on this album. And you'll find out whom I think is the weak link on this album when we're done. Yeah. Um, if you haven't figured it out. It's too now. long a record and for, uh, you know. It's you too know, long yeah. a record and every single one of yeah. these songs is too long. A little, well, not the next one. So Killing Floor is, is the... To me, the second best song on here, and it's like a straight up punk song, a little bit of metal, and again, not a lot of depth to it, but it's fast, catchy riff, good to mosh to, Circle Pit song. It's in, it's out. I think he's still doing it live to this day. It's a pretty good song. I, it was sort of a sort of not a single, but it could have been, probably should have been. This this is like a Star Wars song, a George Lucas Star Wars song, right? In George Lucas's mind, Star Wars is the most in-depth sci-fi universe and story in the world. However, that story is only in his goddamn head. He never told us the story. Do you like Darth Vader? Well, in this movie, he's a sad little boy who gets taken away from his mommy. <laughs> there you go. We all start somewhere. I guess. All right. Necessary evil. Yeah, uh, necessary evil. Not it's um, not necessary. It's really. it's not that good. Uh, written by Moose Man. Don't and, write Moose Man. Yeah, well, uh, he has you know a third of the co-writes on this record. Him and and D Rock. So, um, too, too much D Rock as well. I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Drive by is the next song. Uh, it's an interlude, and like all Ice T interludes, they just kind of passed by. The whole um, thing, he's just, what was he screaming? You killed my brother. Like 90 seconds of you killed my brother. Mm -hmm. You killed my brother. I mean, you there's know, a lot of familiar, like even the beginning of the body count MF, body MF counts track that opens the record has that like very familiar police sirens, mm -hmm. police radio chatter, very similar to that sketch that opens the body count record. So again, more of the same. This is There's like, a lot of more of the same. If, if yeah. This is a, it's a Xerox copy. Could be. Of the first album, well, and but not as good, right? That's what a Xerox it's like a rexograph. Is. It's got like yeah, oh yeah, it's, Mimi, it's a mimeograph. A mimeograph. It's, a mimeograph. it's not quite there. We're old anyway. It's, it's purple. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, that purple stuff. I used to inhale that purple stuff in junior high, man. Oh, you Ooh. you get high. Kids, yeah. don't 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 snort the purple junk at the school. Drugs and alcohol have ruined my life. Anyway, I do cocaine. <laughs> Basically. I'm doing Dave Chappelle and you're doing Dr. Roxo, but oh, the same guy. I love Dr. Roxo. Last Breath is- the Tell middle... me that's not Paul Stanley. It is. For the record. Last yeah. Breath is the middle point of the record and actually is a good song. Yeah, I think this, this is, one's good. This is a pretty good song. Uh, a little repetitive on the lyrics, but I think like the song itself is pretty good. There's no song on this album that isn't repetitive on the lyrics besides Hey Joe. And Hey yeah. Joe is 12 bar blues where they repeat the same line twice in a row. Speak it of so hey Joe is the next track. Okay, was, this, and, was the single 
was specifically hang on record- I, I i need to explode on this one well i i know what okay. you're gonna say I, i'm sorry i this is exactly what's wrong with this album this song was recorded and released a year and a half prior uh i remember hearing it for the Jimi hendrix uh what was it stone free stone free tribute to Jimi hendrix in the early 90s there were tribute albums every other weekend featuring like everyone so and body count got on this which is wrong to begin with they were not in that league but that's besides the point but i remember an interview where ice t talked about oh i wanted to pick a Jimi hendrix song that wasn't too hard for me to sing okay real quick if you're picking a song by Jimi Hendrix that's not too hard to sing, and you have to find the one that you can sing, shit, that is bad. You are, that is a self-indictment on a grand scale. And not only that, but he sang this terribly. This, it's it's a bad done? version. I'm sorry. Are you done? I'm done? I think you're going too hard on this. So first of all, Hey Joe is a political protest song. More than anything else, it's a protest song. I have That's never gotten Ice that. That's why Ice T did it. It has roots in protest, and it's like I understand it's got like a blues story, but like it's very much associated in the American folk style. Okay, it's working class people music, and Agreed. so like if you have money, you could leave your bad woman, but if you don't have money, you might have to shoot her down. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Okay, that makes more sense. Ice T's no singer. Let's just call it well, he's a rapper. He can do poetry. He's an incredible rhymer. He's one of the best lyricists in rap history. Agreed on all counts. He's not a singer by trade. Neither is Mike Muir, by the way, who this band sounds a lot like suicidal. Completely so agree with you. You gotta all those just statements. dial it back a second. Hey Joe was on that on that Stone Free album, which has a lot of great stuff including like Living Color and a whole bunch of other bands, you know, uh, unfortunately, Eric Clapton and a bunch of other people, but it's generally a good one. It's one of the better ones. And nothing tops Nativity in Black, but that's another story. Uh, Too Bad Body Count's not on that one. So I don't hate, I actually like this cover. I don't think it's terrible. I'm not judging Ice-T as if he was Eddie Vedder or Chris Cornell. I'm judging the Ice-T of this, that he's Ice-T and he's not really a singer. But this song is very well recorded and done. It's, a, it's one of the highlights of the record. Probably the best song on the record. It was a single. It was a hit single, by the way. Um, you know, maybe it's not as funny as Hey Pete when Typo Negative does it, but like it's a pretty uh-huh. good, it's for what it is, it's a good cover. I, I'm I, not trying, I didn't expect Picasso. I expected finger paints and I got this. So like. I, 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 I hate this one. Okay. Well, it's all downhill from here, unfortunately. So uh, no, there's a, there's a slight yeah bump. So, but yeah, uh, Sha- shallow graves is next. Uh, uh, not that great. Surviving the game is decent, a little long. All these songs should have been under three minutes or less, or four minutes or less. These couple of five minute ones, even the ones I like, like Last Breath, a little too long. Um, who are you? Nondescript. Oh my god! No, that is not nondescript. See, you know, why we talk about the soft underbelly. This album doesn't have one. This album has uh, a rough hewn two by four in your mouth. Once you flip this record over, you are just, you are just licking sawdust. And who are you? It is not nondescript. It is. What is it? Four minutes almost of no solos, no riffs, Ice-T screaming, who are you, over a nondescript track. So it could have been nondescript until that. And it's I, I, one of the things in this world that I cannot stand is a song that has like eight words in it. That is like my pet peeve. I am fine if you go instrumental, if you're good enough to do it. But if 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 you're not, don't do this. Just don't do this song. Oh, sorry. Fair enough. Um, Street Lobotomy is the penultimate track. Uh, it's a shorty. 
Thank you know, we, God. We, what's a weird weird on this record too is there's a lot of effects on Ice's voice. Yeah, like, Ma- Masters of Revenge is not that good, and it has like this very affected like uh, Gene Simmons live God of Thunder <laughs> on it, and and, and Street Lobotomy is another one where there's like weird effects on the voice. And it's like, you don't need to do much with the guy. Just keep him dry. Let him rhyme. You know, whether it's the most poetic thing ever or not, which most of this isn't. But, you know, like, you don't need to add extra stuff. You you, you know, you're taking away by adding. Agreed. So Street Lobotomy short. It's not terrible. It's fast. It's punky. It's not necessary. It, it's another song where I don't get the setup. Right. I It's in the... because. It, when you listen to the first body count record, the vast majority of the songs are stories. You know, it's like his rapping. It's mm. he's telling street stories, and that's what made it compelling, even when the songs weren't so great, like KKK bitch or Evil Dick. Uh, at least there was Dick. At least there was a story involved. Right. Yeah. There's a lack of that on this whole record, which is probably a shame. Uh, the final track is Born Dead. And the title my, track. My favorite of the album, to be honest with you. Maybe it's, it's, just it's because... the fully formed song. It's a good song. It's it reminds me a lot of uh, early, you know, 90s metal suicidal tendencies. Again, to draw those comparisons, it reminds me of uh, Lights, Camera, Revolution songwriting. Mm-hmm. He, um, there's, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end, and there's a solo. This is the only song on this album that's a fully written song besides Hey Joe. It's the only song on the album that's written by most of the band. Like the you know, like mo- four members of the band have a hand in making this. That so could be why. So yeah, man, it's not great. Uh, there are some there are some good songs. There's you know half of it's listenable and decent. I love Hey Joe. You hate it. That kind of puts it down a notch. But I love it. I I understand what it was. And well, I like and- I like the idea of Ice T doing Hey Joe and doing it justice. That's just me. Um, I you were gonna make a point about like what's lacking, which we've discussed, uh, you know, very well. So I'll let you but, sum up, sum it up before I put my final frosting on us. Before I get to the negatives, mm-hmm. I want to do some positives. The drums were amazing. Now, anybody who knows me realizes how much damning with faint praise that is for me. The sound of the drums was amazing. When he when Beatmaster V started kicking those double that those blast beats, it was the kind of sound. It sounded organic. It sounded real. Something that we have lost in this modern era, when every artist uses triggers now. Instead of so you actually, it has that sound where in my mind I envision the amplifiers shaking, because he has to kick it so hard and shakes the back line in order to get that sound. So that was a nice nostalgic feel for me. Uh, the guitar tone was amazing. Things we were missing, strong bass lines, changes in songs, vocal quality, uh, solos, and a single fully formed thought. This was like listening to a heavy metal version of a meth head trying to get a fix. I love Ice T. I love Body Count. I have bought the you know I bought several of their records. This one is absolute cat shit. This was uh, man. I, I Ice T on this album for me is the weakest link. I thought you were going to say that. He seems I don't know what's going on in, at this time. If he's busy making movies, television, other records, rap records, he seems checked out. The quality Correct. of the lyricism and just the, it's just not here. It's this, really missing the whole record except a couple of tracks, which is a shame because he's a genius. Like he's a bona fide on Born genius. Dead, on Born Dead, he knocks it out of the park. He has a fully yeah. formed thought. Maybe he this record should have formed- just been like eight tracks and chopped out half of the crap. And then he could have worked a little harder on the ones that were good, or, you know, just a little more free right. form thoughts. You don't need 12 tunes. You need 10 tunes tops. 
you know, do 10 four minute tracks and you've got a 40 minute record. This is a 47 minute album. It's a little on the long side, not significantly long, but I like my albums between 40 and 45. Once you get 47. past that. Yeah, it's, it's a little long, just a hair. Maybe the other problem is that Ernie and Ice produced it. Now, probably Ernie and Ice produced it based on also like the whole BS with Comp Killer. I so also like got to in- point out that Ernie uh, produces Black Sabbath in a year to much the same effect. Um, it's Ice has the feeling, the Ace Fraley Spaceman feeling uh, on his participation on the album. The, oh, that'll do. This is enough. Could be. Could be they were just trying to churn out this record. Maybe this is a one and done on this label. And uh, again, this album does not negate what I consider to be the mostly good, occasionally excellent body count debut. This record is definitely a few steps down. It's got good moments. If you're a diehard fan, you might want this. Probably not. There's a third of at least a quarter of this record or a third you could lose and not miss. But the good songs are good. And again, I like Hey Joe, you don't. Fine. We'll split that. But like. I think if you're a completist or a diehard body count fan, this is worth getting, but probably not if you're a casual fan. Um, there is some definite quality here. I mean, some of the songs are absolutely great. The real problem I have with this album is that it's not done. The, uh, yeah, they or, or it's too, they... or it's again, it's too long. It could have, it, it's, you know, just again, if you chopped out what really sucks and focused on making those other tracks better, maybe it's a better record. Maybe it's up to a, another level up. But My biggest complaint on this album is the songs aren't fully formed. And yeah, I, when, But when that's 10 of 12... Yeah, it's, like, yeah work, it's like eight of them are New York. Um, if you work six, mo- six more months, yeah, you might actually... You know, the riffs are well, good when they're there. <laughs> You, you might have. They might have worked for this album. They might have worked on this album for six months, and I think that's the thing. Um, it could have been better. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, that's not unfair. I don't think there's a lot of. Yeah, there's really not like a lot of anything else to say about this. So I've kind of said my piece. Uh, again, doesn't diminish Ice T or Body Count to me personally. They definitely go on to make much better records than this. Um, Look, I love Metallica. They did say Danger and Lulu um hey i just will never it's not good anyway do you want to take us home nicholas or is it my turn i don't remember your turn you take us oh crap okay well anyway thanks for listening and humoring us with this episode of this somewhat uninspiring second body count record we'll be back next week with another for the final installment in the body count series but this has been the glacially musical podcast hosted by my good friend nick cameron i'm keefe from ghostcoldman.com like and subscribe if you like this check us out on spotify and apple podcasts and wherever you podcast watch this on youtube the best compliment you can give us is either a rating or sharing it with a friend if you don't like what you listened to and heard drop us a comment we do consider all and any comers with feedback we mean that and if you love the show we also appreciate praise because you know we're human beings who are not made of stone and in summation, this has been the Glacially Musical Podcast, and it does not play in Peoria, where there were probably no drive-by shootings. No, they do. They have them? Okay. Yep. I didn't know. Now we know.